yeah, this is the hard work of choosing. The hard work of choosing how you want your life to go. And as you change, interestingly enough, sometimes the people around you change. Because one of the things that happens in group dynamics is that our projections come up. Our projections, so we might be in a group that, you know, this is normal, I have to say. It's very normal to have a romance phase with a group. That Just like with the relationship, you're in the romance phase, everything's wonderful. And then... What happens is you enter the power struggle phase or the disappointment phase and you start to realize you have to be yourself in a relationship, not a fused romance. And you have to be yourself within a group, not a fused everybody's happy, happy, we'll all take care of each other and live happily forever after. I have studied conflict resolution on purpose because I want to have the potency that lives in conflict be used towards the greater good. And the greater good has to start with individuals who can think. Individuals who can think and not get emotionally triggered, who can have emotional vitality. So now, take your hands again, and this time... Find the little flow between your fingers. Mm, find a little flow, not quite as much pressure as before. Find the flow, but don't make it just light, light, light flow. So you're in between. You've got self and movement. Not self rigidity or too much pressure that over time you'll get exhausted. Find that nice, mm, self place there's so many things i i could talk for hours about group dynamics i could tell you a story i was in a i've been in groups twice twice where i was relegated you know as the projected uh lightning rod of all the negativity of the group and in one group i was you know working as a working a group tra uh, trade and when i finally went with the the group out on an event for the day the facilitator had enmeshed the group members so much and she had wandered off with her boyfriend into the fields of hawaii you know and left us to do our rituals uh, on the the side of the volcano there and we're doing our rituals and the weather turns and one of the group members is getting hypothermic. I used to lead and guide for outdoor adventures. And this woman became hypothermic. And so I thought, okay, I need to, so I sat her down and I was reorienting her, asking her, you know, what's your name? Where were you born? Where did you grow up? Getting her oriented because she was losing it. Well, the group leader comes back, is alarmed because I'm interacting with her client and Frankly, this was her high-paying client that she had just abandoned to go off with her boyfriend. It was a, you know, ridiculous situation. But anyway, we got everybody back in the car. This woman had my jacket. We went back to the group setting. I walk in, and I'm put in a different room. First, I'm saged, so I'm not going to be dangerous. And then this other woman and I were, were put in another room and completely ostracized. Wow, what a shocker, right? What a horrible leadership. And I learned a lot from that. You know, and then another time I was in a meditation group and I was with this community and then I was asked to leave. Oh my gosh, right? I had been living in this household. I don't know if it, you know, when my husband died, I oriented with a meditation group, was living in a household and Oh my gosh, they asked me to leave and it's because I was individuating and not going with the, the covert norms of the group. So then there was a reason I wasn't good enough. And I'm, I'm not an, you know, I'm not a rowdy activist. I'm not going to create a lot of hassle in a group, but I will 
not go along with things that, or I will open a discussion. And sometimes in groups, they don't want you to open discussions. Well, when I was asked to leave, I could feel every basal ganglia, you know, the, what do you, along the nerve roots, along the sides of the nerves, fire off like popcorn. It was so, so shocking. So what I want to say about this is don't hurt yourself within a group setting or heal, definitely heal yourself from your family of origin wound. You do not have to, oh, I'm so glad this is resonating with you. Yes, you do not have to go into a group trance. You don't have to avoid groups. You can learn to have functional task groups and even a functional family. Yes, that's so, so important. So take a breath and massage your heart. Massage your heart. Take a breath. Hmm. Give your heart a little massage. Yeah, so you're not reacting because I'm getting a lot of response here about the pain of group experience or family experience. And put a hand, now put your hands on your kidneys. You used to lose yourself in a group. Yes. It's so, so important to not lose yourself. And anyone who's facilitating groups will, in a healthy manner, does not want you to lose yourself. Individuating is the task of growing up to be more and more of who you are. Now you try to be yourself in a group. Good for you. And you were influenced by, you were influenced by groups at that time, but not for long. Yeah, it's... It's, you know, it's challenging when you start seeing how you want to go into a group trance or you want to enmesh or you want to fuse because that can be a longing of the heart. So I hope you don't put yourself down. The longing of the heart is real. What we want to make sure is your longing is not prenatal, meaning it could be in utero or in the fallopian tube you have a twin as your cells divide and then before you implant that twin goes away that's a real condition it happens frequently and people who don't know that they can have this longing to get connected i'm not saying that happened for you i don't know the circumstances but if you have that longing, don't put yourself down, but explore Vanishing Twin. You can Google about it. I teach about it in my April course and also in my mastermind coming up. We really look in the mirror at behaviors. We look at, oh, what did I do? Huh? And we help have the compassion to support, to confront behaviors that aren't working. That is so, so important. Yeah, groups can kill off positive individual energy. And it's hard for groups to accept every member. And sometimes people are organized if they grew up in a family where somebody was ostracized. They'll do that in a group. They will pick anyone, you know, and... What can happen in a group, why a person can become scapegoated, is they get scared in the group. They have, there's one of two behaviors that real, or two behaviors that really are, highlight this. One is in a group setting, a person demands all the attention. It's what I call the lightning rod. It's very common with adoption. People who are adopted often have all the attention focusing on them. It's very common with early birth trauma where all the attention was focused on the baby. And often they become what's called the lightning rod in a group setting and people, other people resent it. So they can create the group turning against them to recreate their birth situation. It's, it's so interesting. Or people can get scared because conflicts arising that's not being addressed by the facilitator. 
when that happens, the group cannot feel so safe. And then somebody might freeze and withdraw, and our animal nature will notice a freeze. If someone is not revealing, speaking up enough, not participating, they can become a target. And so it's very hard for the quiet ones to have enough breathing room to get their voice out into the group setting. There's so many pieces of the puzzle. What I do with groups, and this is kind of my specialty, is I'm able to work with the big energies that enter a group field and help tease them apart, help someone pause their shock pattern, keep this, the, the health of the individual by slowing things down till we're all, you know, adding our wisdom. When you can add your wisdom into a group, the actual outcome of the group is more intelligent than an individual's perception. I use the group field to help people get the most benefit of their growth because there will be wisdom coming in that I couldn't think of individually, but I can feel it in the group field. So I say this because I really want you to not be re-traumatized, to not be afraid of joining a four-month group with me, and to really get the supportive success of how to be out in the world, right? How to be existing in the relational field. It's so, so important. So I hope you're breathing right now, not getting re-traumatized. Uh-oh, you can't hear me. Uh-oh. Mm, what should I do? All right, I'm going to restart this session. We'll have two recordings. <clears throat> and we will make it work. So we'll have the same thing for our Facebook. We had a little technical difficulty, so thank you for coming back on, and I hope everyone can hear me now. Good. Can you hear me now? Yeah, I'll put a yes in the comments so I know. So we're talking about group fields. Yay, there's sound. Thank you. So with group fields... Let's take our hands. Hmm. We'll take our hands like this and breathe. Yeah. A group field should not be like this, where you're rigid. A group field has to have the flexibility of group members, the flexibility of individuals within a group. So take your hands again and and if you're 
get afraid in a group, look at all these individuals. They're going to be frozen little radars, right? So the group field is going to get more frozen. So you want to stay embodied in a group field. It's very, very important that you don't sit and freeze. You can see this in very subtle ways. If a group facilitator asks a question, sometimes you'll get people who just jump on the answer and you'll get other people who withdraw and wait. And we call this waiting held stillness. If a group goes into held stillness, I bet you, you can tell. Everybody in it can feel the tension of held stillness. That's what starts to make a group feel unsafe. That's what starts to get people's reactions going. So make sure, come bring your hands again, make sure you're not just la, la, la. you are moving in a contained and not controlled, but, but um, enjoyable manner that within a group, there's enough vitality, there's enough rest, there's not abuse, there's not covert norms. So when you get off this call, I'm going to give you a little homework if you're activated here. I'd like you to write down on a piece of paper all the group covert norms. If you were in a group or your family, and you felt scapegoated. Oh, I'm so glad this is helpful. Yes, you felt scapegoated or traumatized. Please share this post with your friends because I want to get this group information out there. There are so many groups that create drama and trauma. Oh, a covert norm. Thanks for your question. A covert norm is an unspoken rule. Groups have kind of rules of belonging and when these there'll be overt ones which everybody knows like maybe some groups are you know we start on time so people know that that's overt and the leader says oh time to start here we go that's overt a covert one is you punish someone who walks in late or you ostracize someone or a covert rule could be we don't accept people who look different than us that could be a covert norm. And children can grow up with that not even knowing it. So we don't want covert norms. So on your piece of paper, if you're a little activated by this exploration today, make some bullet points. And I want you to write down what were your family rules? What were the group rules that are obvious? Then I want you to think think about it and feel what was a covert norm what was a rule we just knew but we never even t talked about it and some of them can be healthy i'm not saying everything is not healthy but i just want to identify what's overt and what's covert like for someone in some settings what's covert is a, a sense of safety in a group you know we have a a covert norm that we, we automatically treat people with respect and expect them to be um, expect them to be cared about. That could be a covert norm that not everybody grew up with. So what's a way we can stay grounded if we have to be part of a punishing group? Well, the first thing is to notice it and not take the bait not take the bait of being punished and get reactive. Now, sometimes a facilitator will unknowingly or knowingly target someone in the group and the whole group feels it. If this is a family, you know, there's a book, it's a fictional book written by a woman who was targeted by her mother. She had a borderline personality mother <clears throat> who targeted one child and not the others. And in this group setting, this family field, the other children would blank out when the mother was 
being mean to this one child. And when this woman grew up and she's healing her background and figuring it out, she approaches her siblings. They don't have any memory. Uh, that's how she learned. They literally blanked out because members don't like to see somebody targeted because it's not safe, but they're afraid that if they say anything, they'll get the, the, the venom or they'll get the, you know, attention of the one who's being the mean facilitator. So they don't speak up. So one of the things you can do is start finding ways to name out loud. Gosh, it, you know, I feel like I'm being punished. I wonder why. And if you put it like a question rather than an accusation, you'll get a lot more breathing room. I wonder what in your comment to me has me feeling like I'm being punished. Hmm, it's very interesting to me. I call this just dropping a seed, naming a little seed out there. Because if you're part of a punishing group, that's what a cult is. Groups are very good at creating mob energy and they organize the gut instinct to hurt other people, to, you know, interrupt the heart's compassion. Yeah, good, good luck with that. I, keep me posted how it goes because dropping a seed helps to awaken the intelligence of the whole group field. And that's what we do in my courses. In my online courses, we have a shorter time but I can tell you in my focused four month program and anyone out there, you can book a free call. The link is in my bio. I am looking for people ready to sit into the container of a safe group field and figure it out. And it doesn't mean you have to be loyal to me. I'm teaching you how to feel yourself and show up within a group setting to help you have the confidence to be out in the world with your creative dream, with your project, with making changes in a relationship. This is the place where people can disappear based on their experience or their fear of being seen. So it's been such a treat to talk with you today about group fields and group dynamics. And I'm sorry I had some tech difficulties, but please, please share this with your field, your field, yes, with your friends. And I will post this as two separate, part A, part B, so you don't miss any parts of the, the story today, the live. And I'll try to figure out why my sound keeps cutting out. So much love, much well-being. Do have the courage to move forward in making changes in your life that are supportive of your natural intelligence. Look online, that will tell you how much the four month commitment is. Send me an email. So don't go away when you just see the investment. Talk to me. Okay, and I only run it once a year. So it starts on January 25th. It meets on Monday and on Wednesday from 10 to 12 Mountain Time and there's loads of resources in between. So you will be like a dog on a shoelace where I will track you and make sure you're getting your needs met and growing. So Wednesday, January 25th is the opening start date. Have a look. Join me. I love you. Keep growing and healing. And bye for now.